Wonderful, we are live again. It's us with the core competences. Kirsten, one more step today on the ICF core competences. Yes, indeed, indeed. Last indeed. bit. Last bit, we are almost there. So we have now um, that we talk uh, now into the session through the ICF core competency number six. And after that, we have two more, evokes awareness and facilitates client growth. That means two more weeks and we have completed all ICF core competences with, again, mentioning it straightforward. Our aim was to guide you through how would these competencies show in your recordings, in the work that you do, and especially how would an evaluator look at them through the process of performance evaluation. Um, once we're done with this one, don't worry, it doesn't mean that we are done. It just means that we move also into exploring the EMCC core standards. And after that, we will have to look also in the team coaching competences and so on. So there's plenty of things to be um, exploring. Um, and our aim is definitely to create value and create value for you. And with that, I find my segue into saying if at any point you have questions or if there's something that is not clear or you would like to explore more, ask more, more than happy to either come to one of our meetups and address that thing, write us an email and we'll definitely answer to that. Or third of all option that we always have there is you go on the website and book an info call whoever is listed in the especially if you want to have it in your particular language have a call with us and we're more than happy to give more information more input and have fun conversations i think i definitely can say i really enjoy sh small short kind of like coffee breaks but this kind of interactive coffee breaks when we can talk some about something that we both sparkle knowledge and sharing so that being done, um, I move again to today we do core competency number six. A topic that I find it extremely important for all of us as coaches because we're talking about listens actively. And Kirsten, I'll turn towards you again with what should we understand about what does this syntax of listens actively mean? Well, it depends. There are two ways of what one should understand about or many ways of what one should understand about okay i think um there are many myths around active listening uh, i remember 15 20 years ago we had trainings for active listening and these active listening trainings were like somebody says something and you repeat word for word what they said and um there even was a doctoral dissertation um, that was mentioned to me by Janet Bavilas, where they had 20 people who were trained in active listening and 20 people who were not trained in active listening. Um, they listened to a group of people. And then this group of people evaluated who was the better listener. And it were the natural listeners. It was not the active listeners. So. Um, active listening is not something that we do specially. It's not something where we like, it's not a technique or a tool or, you know, in NLP, we have this uh, concept of pacing and leading. So first I copy everything you do and then um, I can lead the conversation. And that is pretty much uh, nonsense. So yes, you can see that when people um align when people like each other they will use similar language they will use similar body language but i mean that's all that's often you cannot separate language from body language anyway um but it's a kind of chicken and an egg situation so you can see that people who like each other and are in conversation are using similar body language but that doesn't mean that in order for someone to like you, you should be using similar body language. So, so um, that's a bit the same with active listening. Um, this Another myth that we have around active listening is that it's about ensuring understanding. So you hear a lot of people say, did I get you correctly? And they're using the sender receiver model of communication, which is also, I think, completely outdated. 
communication isn't information transmission. It is co-creating something new. So when we are in coaching, what do what are we what are we really doing when we're doing things that are called active listening? We are using clients' words that seem important, and we are offering them back to the client for the client to check whether they are also important for them. So rather than saying, did I understand this correctly? Maybe a more partnering and useful way would be, did I pick up what is important for you? So um, when, when we are listening actively and when we are repeating words that the client is saying, we are almost shit, we have a torch light, a flashlight in our hands, and we're highlighting certain things, and we're not highlighting other things. And as coaches, we can be deliberate about this. So let's say a client says, yeah, I'm, I, I really have a very, very hard time with procrastination. Mm. And, you know, um, most of the time, it's very hard for me to get stuff done that I don't like doing. So as a coach, you could say, oh, wow, that sounds difficult. You really have it. You always have a hard time with procrastination. So what I'm shedding light on is it's difficult and it's always. Yeah. So instead, if I say, oh, wow. Sometimes you have difficulties, then we're shedding light at. There are other times where it is not difficult. So in a sense, active listening is what are we choosing to pay attention to in what our client says and allowing the client some choice whether these, are, these were the right things that we... Um, paid attention to. Um, and I think the most important thing for me is that the authority for how something is to be interpreted always lies with the, mm. al always, always, always lies with the client. So this idea of me pretending I am an outsider to the conversation, I am observing what is really happening. I am interpreting the body language. Um, that is a, I think that is a position we shouldn't take as coaches. We should be aware of the fact that we are in the conversation with the person together and we are collaborating and we are creating something new. The, the one thing the that one we can thing. do is offer our perceptions, offer, offer what we are noticing for the client to check if it's relevant. So part of active listening is also listening for the emotions or listening for interesting shifts and switches during the conversation. Um, interesting, we are noticing it, but the fact that we as coaches are noticing it has to do with both us and the client. It might be that we are noticing something because it's pertinent to our lives. It doesn't mean that it's pertinent mm -hmm. to the client's life. We just had a wonderful exercise in our coaching organizations program where somebody was telling a story of like a bit of a hero story of something that could have gone wrong but didn't. And everybody else was invited to listen to the important bits and to check where's the resonance with them. And depending on how, what resonated, people were listening to very, very different things. It was a story about um, someone deciding to go for a workshop, even though it was a big storm. And, and then the decision turned out to be the right one. Some, some people picked up oh, this person really trusted mm. in the universe. Other people picked up, oh, this person was so careful to make sure everybody was safe. 
other people picked up very different things and what they picked up had to do with them and the client and the situation and the interaction. So I think active listening, if it's done well, is always done in this, um, in this idea of collaboration. We are constructing something together by how we deliberately invite our clients to pay attention to some things and not to others. So uh, maybe in summary, if you, if you um, want to pass the ICF, the performance evaluation, it's important for you to pick out the words that seem important for the client, pick out important shifts and offer them back to the client as something that might be interesting in the awareness that the fact that you find this interesting as a coach may or may not be what is relevant to the client. So I am noticing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to me, it seems like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. am I picking up something that is relevant here or not so that's kind of the, i mean it's not a formula please don't use it as a formula because it ruins every conversation it's just a, like how how you talk with someone what is what is your idea about active listening i think that is the most important thing um and it'll if you have that idea about active listening you you won't have any issues with the ICF performance evaluation. So I hope. <laughs> Long rant, I'm sorry. <laughs> I find it extremely useful because there were a couple of elements in there that um, I could not not highlight or, or notice. And I'm guessing, you know, I'm going to pick up also, we have this um, a comment also from coming now in um, with the conversation that we have and the fact that these are useful sessions. And so I think it's linked to what you were saying also, as long as we're trying to actively be present and it links also with the previous competencies when we spoke about maintains presence and cultivate trust and, trust and safety. As long as we are there with the client, for the client, we're gonna be listening to them. So we're gonna create a space where it's gonna be useful for them. So realize by seeing also that comment that that's what we are trying to model also by both of us being present today and having a conversation around the topic that we find it's important hence it's going to turn into valuable output in a way output out of this conversation and now i would switch also a bit the lens also in the direction of when you put a hat on of an ICF performance evaluator, when you go put a hat of an ICF assessor and you need to go listen to a recording through them in the process of performance evaluation, what are the key things that you're looking at when it comes to is this coach showing this competency of number six, listens actively? What are you looking at mostly, Kirsten? I'm going to say, first of all, I mean, don't hear you yet, but I know you're going to put on I your need to myself. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. So, so um, oh, there was some background noise. Um, I, I think the, um, what I just said is what, what also the ICF evaluates in a performance evaluation. So that is, um, does the coach pick up on the important bits? Um, does the coach notice the important bits? Um, does the coach offer these important bits or does the coach presume that what they are noticing is important? Mm -hmm. um, is the coach using the client's words? I just had a, a performance evaluation where the coach consistently ent um, entered her own metaphors. They were useful, but it might have been better to work with the metaphors of the client because the client, th that is the client's world. Um, so I think those, those, are also, those are also the things the ICF um, evaluates. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So take those part, especially of client words, client metaphors, clients world at the end of the day. And that the areas that we should be curious about, curious about in their desire to discover more. And I think that's how we link it also with the other core competences. Um, and there's one more element that um, I've always looked uh, when it comes to this uh, competency, um, because it's if you go back to how ICF presents it on the on the website, you know, we have there the definition of what the client is and is not saying. So this this is always a part that I find, yeah. How do you do that? What the client is saying, how the client what the client is not saying, and how many times we need to also keep in mind that it's something that we perceive that the client is not saying. As we turn back to checking with the client, making sure that it's their understanding and what is it useful for them. I see you going like, yeah, mm, don't know. I, I know I, what the client is not saying. How the can I know what the client is not saying? And how do I know that you know, this, this opens up a Pandora's box of my assumptions on what yeah. the client um should be thinking or has not um i'm not so sure i like this kind of language um maybe it could be useful to say okay if the client is talking very very strongly about one thing and not talking about the other and we as coaches think it there might be a connection we can ask and offer this as our intuition. But the assumption that I can know what the client is not talking about and should be talking about, I think mm. is a completely warped one. Doesn't fit my ethics of coaching, <laughs> sorry to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think this is why it's useful to highlight and bring it back to the benefit of the client, you know, saying, what 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 are you think what are your thoughts what are you like you said earlier this is what i heard i don't know might be completely useless to you or might be the most invaluable things from everything that you've introduced until now dear client what is it that you are trying actually to say as valuable from uh, from this situation or from the topic that you're bringing okay so now to sum up in a minute we looked at active listening from the perspective of how do we keep our stance as a coach in there and how what, what does that mean actually? How would you um, get involved in showing that competency linked to, again, that part of performance evaluation? And really um, take also the, the, the other comment that, that uh, we received about the examples and to look at the language and what's important in the conversation always for the client indeed we have there to create a space for the client so uh, that being said this has been a space also for you and thank you so much for bringing all of you as now meaning everyone that looked and will maybe will be watching this and if you have other curiosities that are linked like this part with what the client is saying or not saying more than happy to pick up. Uh, we said it at the beginning, come to a meetup, write us an email or do an info call with us. Any of those ones will do to expand this conversation. Next week, we look into competency number seven, which uh, I always, I, from there, what I pondered every time is this formulation with exploring beyond. So Kirsten, next week, we tackle this part. <laughs> um, competency number seven. And as we said, we have plenty of other things. If in the meantime, you come up with another question or idea of what else we should we talk about, do drop us a message because we're increasing our list of things that we want to address in this small spaces of conversation. Thank you very much, Kirsten, for bringing your examples and input today again. And we see each other with everyone next week. Bye-bye.